Tupac's bodyguard, Michael Moore's fiance, talks about who Michael Moore said came to pick him up at the Luxor Hotel on that fatal night in Las Vegas so that he couldn't secure Tupac Shakur. Also, Michael Moore's fiance talks about in detail with exclusive information in regards to the got him that Michael Moore said that he heard over on Reggie Wright's radio while they were standing outside of 662. Let's get into some more some of this straight game. Yeah. Blackjack, blackjack. Life is like the game of cards. It's not what you dealt with, but how you play it. Remember they used to laugh at a brother. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. It's your boy Delray Richardson, platinum artist, platinum songwriter, straight game TV. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I got a very special guest uh, 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 this evening, uh, a young lady by the name of uh, Judy uh, Lakowski. And um, I don't want to, you know, introduce you, Judy. I want you to introduce yourself and 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 explain to the viewers uh, what is your relation uh, to uh, uh, the situation involving death row and, and your connection to that in regards to that. I'm gonna let you go ahead and do that. Go ahead. I am Michael Moore's fiance. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Michael Moore, for the people who don't know, for the people who do, Michael Moore was one of the, um, security guards at, uh, death row. Um, he worked, under uh right way security at that particular time uh which was a security company as we all know ran by reggie wright jr and um so um what i want to what i want to do is i want to establish you know a timeline which really doesn't matter to me because like i said when you meet somebody and you have a conversation and you were his fiance right and i know it's some things that you know a lot about that a lot of people don't know about you understand what i'm saying so um so you and Michael Moore met around what, what time? 2007, he moved to Arizona. Okay, 2007, he moved to Arizona. And and for, for the viewers who don't know, uh, give me some of the uh, intricate details in regards to when you guys met, you know what I mean? And so from that perspective. Well, we were out in a bar. Uh huh. I was out with my friends, he was by himself. We went out to the dance floor. I come back and he's sitting in the chair beside me. Okay. And he asked me to have a drink with him and my friends wanted to leave. So I drove, I had to take them to their car. I came back, had a drink with him and I was leaving for San Diego for a week. And he kept calling me and calling me and calling me, begging me to go to dinner. Okay. So we went to dinner and we just seven years we were together. Absolutely. So, so I'm going to get right into the, right into the gist of it. Um, we, we understand, um, and we've heard a lot of things in regards to Michael Moore. We've heard a lot of people talk about and speculate about his death, um, why he died and all of these things. But I know if you were his fiance, I know you have the intricate details as to the truth on what those are. And what I want you to do today is share that with the viewers. So, um, if, if we can get into it from this perspective. Um, Vegas. Let's go to Vegas, and then let's and, and then we'll, we're going to work our way up. Let's go to Vegas. Um, what do you know about Vegas? What do you know about what did Michael Moore tell you specifically about Las Vegas and the things that transpired that night in Vegas in regards to Tupac Shakur, Suge Knight, and what you may know? Okay. Well, let me preface this with: I am from Philly, right? And I have a filthy mouth. Right. And I'm going to say what Michael said. Yes. Word for word. Absolutely. Without, without any. Um... Filter. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, filter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> filter. That's a good word. Okay. Um, basically, he had already taken the class that he, everyone had to qualify for in order to be a guard in Vegas. Okay. So he didn't have to go to the class. So what do you mean? What do you mean by class? Well, there was a in Vegas, there's a class that you have to attend and get a certificate to be a bodyguard to carry a weapon in Vegas. Okay. 
So you say he already took that class. He had already taken it, right? Okay, gotcha. So he didn't have to repeat it. So when he arrived, Frank had arrived shortly thereafter. Okay. Frank had been put on vacation and Hawk was pissed off because he didn't know where Frank went, why he was gone, what had happened. Okay, so let's be clear. We're talking about Frank Alexander. Correct. Okay, Correct. Frank Alexander, got you. So when Pac arrived and he seen Frank, he wouldn't speak to him initially. Okay. And they had Michael on Pac for the night. And this is this is the night of uh, September 13th? Right. This the is night the of September. Night, the, fight. The, night, the night of the fight. Right. Okay, got you. Well, they went to, I, I want to say fr TGI Fridays for lunch or what okay. have you. Right. And all the, all the guards were there. After that, they went to George Kalisa's, the attorney's office. Okay. Which is where, when at that point, they were told no weapons could be carried. Michael said the reason that they were told this was because Suge was buying trying to buy 662. They could not have any weapons there because he was trying to get a liquor license. Okay, got you. That's, Michael, that was the reason that, that Michael told you was the reason they, that they had at the meeting. That was the reason that was uh, stated. Okay, because Shug right. was trying to buy a liquor license for 662, so no weapons were allowed. Okay, continue. So at that point, Michael stood up and he basically said, fuck you. So hold on, pause. <laughs> Did Michael say who said that specifically? They went to George Kalisis's office. Okay. Did he say who said it specifically? It was George. It was George. Okay, the lawyer. Okay, got you. But keep in mind, Reggie was there with all the guards. Okay. Got all you. Right. Okay. Okay, so he stood up and he said, fuck you. I am not going to guard the biggest rapper in the world and show up at a gunfight with a twig. Absolutely. Not happening. Right. So they basically ended the meeting there. So it was ended abruptly from, from, from your understanding? Yeah, very quickly. Okay, gotcha. Again, Michael was in the military, and he was a very good shooter. Okay. With that said, he went back to his hotel room, and he laid down and his phone blew up. He said that thing was going to blow up in smithereens. It just kept blowing up, blowing up, blowing up. And okay. it was Reggie. Reggie had taken him off Pac's side. So, 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 so after the meeting, Michael Moore goes back to his hotel. Which hotel was he staying at? Um, mm, I know it wasn't the MGM, but it was next door. The next, the next was one it the, over. Was it the Luxor? Yes. Yes. The Luxor, okay, right. So Reggie ended up going to Michael's room. So and first first you said Reggie Reggie called called his phone. He kept he calling called him. Michael's room. Michael said, I am not answering that prick. I have had enough. To, to who? To who he said that to who? He said to me. Oh, he, he said, said that. Okay. I'm not answering that phone. Not okay. happening. Okay. So he said he wasn't picking up the phone. Right. He said he kept calling him all day long. He was trying to take a nap and he knew he was going to have his hands full all night. Right. He said because he was under the impression still that he was going to be on Pac's side. Okay. He said and once Pac got into the casino and he saw a crap table, there was no getting him out of there. Okay. So now, but you <laughs> said that you said that Reggie came to the room. He right. Came, so Reggie he, comes to the room he and he goes, he and, right, he comes to the room and he says, "Let's go. You're going to six six two. Oh, yeah. Okay. And Michael's like, "What? No, I'm guarding Pac tonight." He said, "No, you're not. You're going to six six two. You're manning the door, and you're going to make sure that when Pac arrives, there's no issues, and you can get him in. So you'll be manning the door outside for his arrival." Okay, got you. Okay. So. In the meantime, Michael gets ready. They go to the club. Right. It's not open yet. Okay. So people started arriving that were working there. Right. Michael's outside with Reggie. Right. 
So it starts to get later and the fight only lasted a minute. So it wasn't really that long. Right. That he was there. So when he was outside next to Reggie and they didn't go inside, he said 662. They didn't go inside. Okay. No, was, so check this out. So take me back to could, right. They, take, take me back to the part when you said they well, was Michael was that early in the evening that they went to the casino? With they two? didn't go to the casino. He said he knew that he laid down to take a nap because he was tired and he knew that he would have his hands full if Pac was winning on a crap table. He okay. Out of there. He wouldn't be able to get him out of there. Right. right. Okay, got you. Okay. I wanted to right. clarify that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so he said they were standing outside of 662 and people that were working there started to arrive. Right. Well, then other people started to arrive throughout the rest of the evening until he was standing next to Reggie outside. Right. And across his radio, he clearly hears got him. Got him. OK, so he he clearly heard the got him over over his radio. OK. Yeah, that's what so they, you, but they never you saying they never went inside. No, the, he said he didn't go inside. He was he was told he was to man. Make, he manned the front front door. Okay, got you. So that's consistent. No, no. The reason why I say that that's consistent with what Michael said on mm -hmm. the um the interview that he did in the in that in that documentary. So I try not to watch him. <laughs> oh, you try not to watch it? Right, right. It's too emotional for me. Okay, I, it's been nine years now, but it feels like yesterday absolutely and i can understand that so okay so you he's standing outside he right. hear, clearly hears the so so i got a question because i want to i want to what what who what, what what radio did he hear that on well apparently what he said was that hacky what kevin hacky another uh -huh. body he was in california still okay he had worked michael shift the night before Right. And he accidentally took Michael's radio home. So none of the guards had a phone. So uh, Michael right. didn't Michael didn't have a radio. No. None okay. of the guards had a radio that night. Only gotcha. Reggie. Only Reggie. Okay, got you. Wow. And he was standing next to Reggie. So it okay. came across Reggie's radio. Got you. Okay. Got him. Wow. Got him. Got, got him. him. <laughs> right. No, no, I, well, hold on. Let me let me not mean to interrupt you, but I I think this is very important from somebody who had a relationship with Michael Moore. And like I said, I haven't, me personally, I haven't heard anybody um, other than yourself, you know, when we conversated that has told me this information, like I said, I'm listening to what you're saying. And like I said, I believe, because like I said, Michael Moore has stated the same thing and here's somebody who's stating consistently uh, and uh, basically exactly identically what, what Michael Moore said. So go ahead. So here's the got him. Here's got him. And then he said, and not a minute later, like not even 30 seconds, he said, all of a sudden, he said he heard the voice before. He was white, but he wasn't exactly 100% sure at the moment. Right. He was, but he heard, don't say anything else on the radio. Wow. Okay. We have Judy Lukowski, uh, Michael Moore's fiance, Tupac's bodyguard. Um, like I said, thank you for coming on the show, uh, a straight game TV and clearing up all of the rumors, the lies and giving us an in-depth personal view into who Michael Moore was, how he passed away. But most importantly, I want to thank you for your time, you know, and it's your boy Delray straight game.